George Bruno with the 21 report. We are at the 21 Summit in Orlando, Florida. The year is 2020. And I'm having a conversation with Mr. Pat Stedman. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Yes. Thank you. So how'd it go on the stage there? I thought it went great. What was your topic? I was talking about masculine and feminine integration, mm. the 22 convention. So this was a lot about masculine and feminine energy, and it got very esoteric. Um, we also talked about one of my favorite topics, hypergamy. Ah, very good. And uh, yeah, I think it was, I mean, you know, at moments, I think that the, the women got a little lively because we were challenging some assumptions about masculine and feminine dynamics. And so for a lot of women, I think it was difficult to, I mean, they associate masculine traits as being good traits. And this was one of the problems I was trying to bring up. And so we were taking, talking about the distortion of masculine and feminine energy, where it's very b based on like control and fear. Mm -hmm. So you have men who are really controlling and women who are really manipulative. And then how that moved into a depolarization socially, where men then became kind of weak, nice guys, and lost all their ambition. And women became very hard and, and couldn't surrender anymore. So Driven. Yeah. So we talked a lot about we talked about how men move to this integrated place of re-embracing the masculine, but also about women surrendering. And I think that was that was a really, really good conversation. I like that. And then you spoke at the twenty one convention. What was your topic there? So that was how to heal yourself as a man. So very, very deep work focused. And I went through the process with guys about how to basically deal with a lot of internal trauma. So focused on initially reconciling with your father, putting boundaries around your mother. And then from there, talking a lot about dealing with the inner critic and inner child relationships. So I actually, I ran a workshop after the speech and we did a lot of inner child work, which is kind of weird, but it's this idea that you have you know, your sort of parent critic voice, and then you have the child that receives it and that within a personality, a personality is like if a, if a personality isn't very healthy, it's because the child is usually in pain, and that most guys, you know, either ignore the child or don't like the child. They try to get rid of it, which you can't do, and so it lowers the health of their personality. And kind of challenging within this, the cult of self improvement, which is very often based on self abuse. Yeah. And so then the final point we talked about there was initiations and how, how can men integrate this child so it doesn't just stay a child for them and becomes a man. And I talked about my recent trip out in the mountains and basically how putting yourself through these mental and physical and spiritual stress ends up getting you closer to the father which can help to initiate you even though society has lost a lot of the fabric of initiation that boys would usually go through. So you had to kind of unplug in order to get to that. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm kind of feeling this out, right? Like I've been reading about it and I sort of sensed that I needed something like this. So I spent a week hiking the Appalachians. I did about 80 miles and I didn't eat for the week. So 152 hours fasted by the end of it. And I mean, you're very cold, very, very tired, hungry, but you really start to, it, just as a man, like you just got so much closer to God and just, I, I don't even know how to describe it exactly, but it was like that child part in me had become a lot stronger and was no longer kind of looking to deal with wounds, which I think is something that a lot of you know, new age circles do a good job of addressing some of the wounding therapy as well, but they don't do a good job of strengthening. And I think that's where the initiation comes in for guys, so. It seems like every great leader at every level and every type of leader has gone off to the wilderness, has gotten alone, has fasted, has, it just seems to be common amongst famous leaders, mm -hmm. let me just put it that way. Yeah, yeah I, it, it, is a, it is a trend that I think it's because you eventually feel called to do it. Yeah. So I think it'd be good if more men got involved with that today. We'd have more leaders. Yeah. 
I've done fasting and I found that, uh, and I've done some long fasting, five days. And at the end of day five, I was like going through grief because I was so used to not eating. And mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna go back to eating tomorrow. And I was liking what I was encountering after I defeated the hunger after about day two. And uh, when I went back to eating, I kind of missed mm. what I had because I wasn't being affected by caffeine, sugar, TV, podcasts, social media, or anything like that. It was just me and crickets chirping. And that is like George, that's like exactly the same thing I went through. By within two days after the trip, I was starting to feel like the pull back, like almost like your vibration starts to lower a little bit. And there was this grief around it. Like it was so clean and so clear out there. And now I'm coming back to this. And so a lot of, I actually the first, you know, two days of the Wednesday and Thursday this last week, like I was a little reclusive. I was trying to get my speech together, but I was also just, I was kind of going through a grieving process myself about like, how do I integrate what I experienced there with the real world? Mm -hmm. Cause it's like drawing from a well and you want to bring that energy to your life, that, that sort of balance to your life. So I think I'm getting there. How did your wife handle it when you told her you're gonna do this? <laughs> She's very supportive. Okay. She's very supportive. I mean, at first, Every, her and my whole family very often think I'm crazy. Yeah. Um, I think that the big thing was the check-ins to make sure everything was okay because when you're, when you're doing some serious physical activity and you're fasted, that can be, you know, there's some risk there. I mean, frankly, the trip was actually the cold was <laughs> by far the worst variable. So I just did, I would check in um, once a day, I would turn off data, and I just send the text, basically, like I'm fine, mm -hmm. and that was that was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You gonna do it again? I'm not gonna do that exactly. Um, I'm definitely gonna do longer fasting again in the future, but not in the near future. And the main thing I see with nature next time is to do something more of like a survival thing. So having to fend for myself out there. Mm -hmm. Build a shelter or something? Or? Build a shelter, um, including even the food. Most of the food I'm going to have will come from what I can get out there. So I, ha and I have a good friend in mind for that who, um, who's very, he's, he's very good with mushrooms. So, um, so I think he'll know what's edible. There's tons of mushrooms in the forest. That yeah. was one thing I saw. And, you know, get, get more involved with hunting. Yeah. So. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What are your thoughts about the 21 convention this year, this 21 summit? What are your thoughts? I mean, we are on such, like, like the arc of history right now, there's so much going on. I really feel like this was the place to be. It's a summit. It's got all, you know, patriarchs, 21 convention, 22 convention. It's in, energy's incredible. I think that the only, the only thing that was a negative is that there were tons of people, tons more people were gonna be coming, but because of all the travel restrictions, it muted a bit, and even still, I think it's like the biggest one by far that we've had. Yeah. Like the energy is incredible. Everybody who came here yeah. came here because they want to be part of history. Yeah, yeah, it was historical. It truly was. Yeah. Did any speakers? Did you connect with anyone? Did anyone teach you anything? Did you? Did anyone inspire you? Did anyone throw the gauntlet down? Well, Elliot has always been Elliot Hulse. I mean, he's, he's very, very involved with archetypal work, like I am. And I think, obviously, I mean, you can feel it from his presence. He has such a masculine energy to him. And so I've always looked at him as this really, like, great, like, mentor who embodies this integrated masculine. And so I, I, I watch his speeches. I, I talk to him a good amount. And really just, I mean, he, he made a big, a big impact on me because it's tough to find guys who take this spiritual bent with masculinity, who, who can really embody both of those things together. Yeah, yeah. 2020 has been a very weird year. For a lot of people, the first nine months of 2020 sucked. We're at the last quarter now. What advice would you give to someone about the last quarter of this weird year? Mm -hmm. What would you... A lot of people have lost hope, lost energy. They got three months left. 
and they're just like, God. I, I mean, I've heard people say, I just can't wait for this year to end. Mm -hmm. But we got three months to go. You're not going to hold your breath for three months and just wait for it to end. What can people do for mm. the next three months? So I look at this time period like this is, this is the dark night of the soul. This is a period of transition for society. Now, I, I've been someone, I've been doing deep work for a while, but as a society, we're being forced into doing deep work right now. We're being forced into dealing with our shadows and all sorts of trauma that we've had. And society stopped, more or less, so that we have the opportunity to deal with these issues. So we're you know, six, six, seven months into the pandemic at this point, and we're going to have another you know, three months of, of things going through this transitional period. And I really think that if you're not doing the deep work now, you're going to really regret it in 2021 because a whole new world is going to start to be born. This is the period to deal with your demons. This is the period to heal and to slow down. So don't get super stressed out about what's going on in the news. Really focus on, on yourself, focus on the ones who are close to you and build yourself into the person this year so that you can be part of the new world we're going to be creating in the future. I love that. How to Heal Yourself, conversation with Mr. Pat Stedman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, George.